Not many comics have lasted under the consistent eye of a single creator. Today, we're talking about Stan Sakai's Swords Rabbit Samurai comic, Usagi Yojimbo. Let's not waste any more time. My name is Shaw. Welcome to Wit's End. Stan Sakai's Usagi Yojimbo has had a long run with multiple publishers, but I'm going to let Stan Sakai himself tell you about Usagi's history. It appeared in Albedo in winter of 1984, and he's been published more or less continuously since then in Albedo and in Critters, then in his own series from Fanographics and Mirage and now through Dark Horse. Before we get into where you should start with Usagi, today you're not just going to become an Usagi Yojimbo expert, you are going to become an expert in the historical figure who inspired him. I'm also going to talk about Miyamoto Musashi, the legendary swordsman. Miyamoto Musashi is a legendary Japanese swordsman from the 17th century who never lost a duel. You know, 60 duels over the course of his life never lost a single one. In his book, The Book of Five Rings, he talks about when you get into a duel, the life of a warrior is a life where you have to accept death. Death can come for you whenever you can walk into a duel and not walk out. And that's something that he prepared for every single time he picked up a sword. Never Lost a Fight was a renaissance man. He was master swordsman, a writer, a painter. Self-mastery and mastery of the arts were very important to him. But I wanted to talk about Miyamoto Musashi because he plays a big role in the Usagi Yojimbo series. Aside from the namesake, there are so many visual references to the man, mostly from his movies, because there is the Samurai Trilogy, directed by Hiroshi Inagaki. It's three movies starring the legendary Toshiro Mifune, who also has a reference in the Usagi Yojimbo books. A few, actually. The movies are based on, yes, Miyamoto Musashi's life, The Book of Five Rings, but they're also based on the Musashi novel written in 1939 by writer Eiji Yoshikawa. So these are three sources that I would recommend today to make you into a Miyamoto Musashi expert. The Book of Five Rings, and if you get that, be sure to pick up the Kenji Tokitsu translation. He is a Japanese-born martial artist, so he speaks the language, he understands Musashi's teaching from a martial artist point of view, and when you compare it to the other English translations, some of the translations, I'm not going to name names, are translated by people who don't speak Japanese. They're not martial artists. It would not be wise to go with some of these English translations. So go with the Kenji Takitsu English translation of Musashi's Book of Five Rings. On top of that, I highly recommend the Samurai Trilogy by Hiroshi Inagaki. It's Toshiro Mifune, so you can't go wrong with that. It's three movies if you have a Criterion channel. Oh man, this is starting to sound like a plug, but it's not. But you can stream this on if you have an HBO account or if you have... Uh, Criterion channel. I have the physical copy because I watch these movies on repeat, but if you watch them, it'll make your enjoyment of Usagi Ojimbo ten times more than what it normally would be. But there are so many references to Japanese cinema. There's Zatoino, the blind swords pig. It's a reference to Zatoichi, the long-running Japanese Yakuza swordsman movie series starring Shintaro Katsu, who is also the brother to the guy who played Ogami Ito in the Lone Wolf and Cub movies. But if you love Japanese cinema, if you love Chanbara, if you love any samurai movies, there are going to be so many references that pretty much every story is going to, you know, melt your brain a little bit. There are references to Lone Wolf and Cub, to Zatoichi, Miyamoto Musashi, pretty much most of the Akira Kurosawa samurai movies. <laughs> But movies and books aside, let's get into which Usagi Ojimbo comics are right for you. And for the people who have never read an Usagi comic before and don't know where to start, there's no right answer. There are multiple ways for you to check out Usagi's adventures, and I'm going to introduce you to a few that you can get into right now. Now, for those who have never read an Usagi Ojimbo comic before, I'm going to recommend the best place for you to start. Since Usagi Ojimbo is being published by IDW now, IDW is taking the initiative to reprint every single Usagi Ojimbo story from the very beginning 
in color. Now, they did this in their own single issue format, but recently IDW put out a trade called Usagi Yojimbo Origins, which collects the first few Usagi Yojimbo stories. Volume 1 just came out, Volume 2 should be out in about September of this year, so if you're patient, if you think you can just survive on one volume of Usagi stories, go ahead and pick up Usagi Ojimba Origins Volume 1. It is in color. The other Usagi stories are in black and white, but you can get this one if you want to read ahead. There are other volumes available for you, but you can also wait until Volume 2 comes out in a few months. On top of that, IDW has the main Usagi series ready for print every single month, and I think that's actually the only monthly book I'm buying at the moment. So they have the main series of Usagi Ojimbo, and then they have reprint versions called Usagi Ojimbo Wanderer's Road, and that just reprints early stories of Usagi Ojimbo, so you can just pick those up as one-shots. So even if you're not buying the collected editions, there are a lot of ways to get your Usagi fix. Moving backwards from IDW to Usagi's previous publisher, Dark Horse, there are a few ways to read Usagi's Dark Horse adventures as well. You can get the Usagi Ojimbo regular size trade paperbacks, which collect pretty much a main story and then a few short stories. One of the ones I'm looking at right now is Usagi Ojimbo Volume 29, titled 200 Jizo, which is Stansakai's 200th Usagi Ojimbo story. Like I said, these are printed in black and white. These are great books. If you're not too precious, you can take them around with you. You can beat them up a little bit and they can take the damage. Maybe put them in your laptop bag and read them when you have some free time. But this is a great way to read Usagi stories. It's probably the smallest, most compact way to read them, unless you like reading on your phone, which in that case, what are you doing? You can also get the Usagi Yojimbo Saga, which is probably the most popular way to read the Usagi Yojimbo stories. They're bigger paperbacks, they're a little bit thicker. By a little bit, I'm talking about, you know, maybe 500, 550 pages thicker than the Dark Horse trade paperbacks and the Usagi IDW paperback. So, Saga, I'm looking at volume one of that. It has over 500 pages, almost over 600 pages of Usagi Yojimbo stories from the Mirage era and the Dark Horse era. Your swordsmanship is excellent. Now let us test the quality of your blade. Now who will challenge me? Given Usagi's history of being published by Mirage, Usagi Ujimbo has a close relationship with Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is why they show up in pretty much every medium that they've existed in. Comics, TV shows, etc. One of Usagi's most popular crossovers is with the Turtles. If you are not a fan of the color reprints, you can get the reprinted Dark Horse black and white versions, because Dark Horse is reprinting the Usagi Ojimbo saga from the beginning. Volume 1 is out, Volume 2 should be out pretty soon, so there is no shortage of Usagi Ojimbo. Now, this is a little bit of a qualifier here, depending on whether or not you want the black and white versions of the early stories, but if you go back to Usagi's earlier publisher, Fantagraphics, the first time Usagi had his own solo series. You can read those Fantagraphics stories in seven volumes if you're not patient for the second volume of the IDW colored version. For the most part, they should all still be in print. If you buy them online, you might have to go to multiple places. You know, you might have to go to Fantagraphics, in stock trades, kind of mix and match, and try to find which providers have all seven of those original trade paperbacks. But again, those are the early solo Usagi Ojimbo stories. They are all in black and white. I love black and white comics, so colored comics or black and white comics, it's not a detractor for me. The volume I'm looking at right now is the final volume of that series, which has Gen's story. Gen is the uh, bounty hunter rhinoceros, one of Usagi's leading side characters. 
but every single one of those is a great way to get Usagi stories. It doesn't matter if you're a longtime reader or a new reader, there's some Usagi for you. And the genius of Stan Sakai's storytelling is that you can pick up any issue of Usagi Ojimbo or any collected edition of Usagi Ojimbo and get a story that you will appreciate. For the most part, they are standalone. There are threads of continuity in each one of them, but you can start at the volume I showed earlier. You can start at volume 29 of the Usagi Ojimbo small paperbacks and you'll really enjoy it. It's made for hardcore completionists and new fans alike. I'm betting that's one of the big reasons the book has lasted as long as it has, aside from the mind-melting cartooning and phenomenal storytelling by Stan Sakai. The fact that all of this was done by one cartoonist over this period of time is astounding, and it's a book that I'll never get tired of. There are a lot of Usagi stories that I would like to talk about in depth, but this is more of a brief overview. For those who want to get into Usagi, you have single issues, you have smaller trade paperbacks, you have the phone books by Dark Horse, you have the higher quality in-color editions by IDW, along with the single issues for the ongoing series. So you can start wherever you want. The beauty of this series is that you can close your eyes, throw a pebble backwards, and you will hit a story that you will enjoy. But on top of that, be sure to watch the Hiroshi Inagaki Samurai Trilogy. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out The Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi, the swordsman, the real-life figure who inspired Miyamoto Usagi. But be sure to get the Kenji Takitsu version. I cannot stress that enough. The Kenji Takitsu English translation of The Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi. There we have it. Now you are an expert in Miyamoto Musashi and Miyamoto Usagi. If you dug this video, or if you're listening, Share however you can, rate and review on iTunes, like, share, subscribe, get the wits end word out there. But thank you for watching, thank you for listening, take care, stay safe, chaos ensues.